Williams, Kevin Freud, Peter Jones and Sheila Hancock in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you very much indeed. Hello and welcome to Just a Minute. And once again, I am pleased to welcome back after a short break of Sheila Hancock. <laughs> Let us come back to uh, play Just a Minute in the fourth chair against our three regular male competitors of the game. And um, just to remind you, if you don't already know it, I'm going to ask each one to speak if they can for just one minute on some unlikely subject without hesitation, without repetition, without deviating from the subject on the card. And we begin this week with Peter Jones. Peter, the first subject we want you to talk about this week is fiddlesticks. That's a nice subject to begin the show with. So, Peter, can you talk to us for 60 seconds about that starting now? Bosch, eyewash, balderdash are euphemisms for rubbish. And they have a kind of Victorian air about them. When people in those times wanted to silence someone or wanted to indicate that they were boring the living daylights out of them, they used to utter one of these words. There are, of course, many others, like fluff. That's another one. And it isn't often used nowadays, neither are these others, because language has developed and become much more potent, and more words are permitted. Uh, Clement Floyd is challenged. It, it was really a slip of my thumb, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he had said others and more so often. I, yes, I, I think we must be fair. I'll give it to you this time. More, two mores. So, Clement, uh, correct challenge repetition. You get a point for that, and you have 20 seconds left on the subject of fiddlesticks starting now. Where the fiddlesticks, quite apart from the phrase... Uh, Peter Jones' challenge. Uh, hesitation. Yes, I think it was a tough one, but I think just the benefit of the doubt this time, Peter, you have a point for a correct challenge of hesitation. I Sixteen seconds. Pause between two words. <laughs> <laughs> but you pause long enough for me to consider it was hesitation. Really? Yes, yes. No. So, um, Peter, you I agree with the challenge, and you take the subject of fiddlesticks. Sixteen seconds, starting now. There are people who make violins, violas, and even cellos out of matches and walking sticks, and I believe even out of human hair. Now, if one of these instruments were made out of a stick... Then... Uh, Sheila challenged just oh, before the whistle. Well, I take it back. It's too late, Sheila. You've got to say well, something Well, he, he has said out of an awful lot, hasn't he? Out of matchsticks, out of human hair... Out of. He said it every time. Well, I right? didn't actually remember all these Why didn't you interrupt before then? Well, because I thought I'd give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, it's not. <laughs> no good being patronizing. <laughs> no, I think, I think when there's only half a second to go, I'm going to give uh, yes. Peter the benefit of the doubt. I'll tell you what, if he did say out of once or twice, we won't charge anything for it. We'll assume you didn't buzz, and Peter gets the point for speaking when the whistle went. Peter has a, a one-point lead over Clement Freud, and uh, Sheila Hancock and Kenneth Williams have yet to score. In fact, Kenneth has yet to speak. <laughs> so, Kenneth, we're going to hear from you now, and the subject which you're going to start with is Monday. Would you talk to us about Monday for 60 seconds, starting now? You are certainly going to hear the truth. On Monday, I drove on a circuitous route, extremely dangerous one, which is used for training people in the Monte Carlo Rally, and in the process or two, a horrible accident, <laughs> all the way from the Oat Var down, down, down. <laughs> <laughs> Clement Roy challenged. Uh, repetition? <laughs> you would say hesitation or something. I thought they were very kind. They didn't chance on the second down. They waited for a third one. Such a good story. Yeah. I can't imagine him on that call. No, no, going down and down and yeah. down. Uh, Clement, uh, you challenged and I agree, and you have therefore 34 seconds left on Monday starting now. Saturday night is the loneliest night of the week because that's the night my sweetheart and I used to dance the cheek to cheek. Uh, Monday, Friday, Friday gets past, and you. then another week is past. Because it's easy. Monday, he's discussing other days. He's discussing Saturday, yes, I. No, uh, wasn't. Well, we couldn't hear it anyway, so if you. Well, you must listen. <laughs> I was listening. I, I heard still Saturday night it. is the loneliest night of the yeah, week and all that about stuff That's about my I... baby. You Monday. Know. <laughs> Nothing to do with Monday and I'd rather get back to me going down. <laughs> 
I think you quite clearly established at the beginning uh, that you were talking about Saturday because you said Saturday is the loneliest night of the year and I therefore think uh, Kenneth's challenge is justified and he has 29 seconds now on Monday starting now. And eventually I reached the city of Draguignon which will be known to all the erudite among you as the legendary home of Clemenceau of France, one of the great prime ministers of the country, who, in company by Lloyd George, went and killed... Uh, is he Ben Hancock's challenge? Is he deviating a bit? It doesn't seem to be much about Monday, does it? No, really? I don't know where she... Do you, this is where I was on Monday in Draguignon, which oh, is the I home of Clemenceau, the prime minister of France. Yes, you Monday. went there on Monday, but now we're off about uh, Lloyd George and Clemenceau yes, and Draguignon. Well, that's well, better than the start at the beginning, which is all me drip dries and all that stuff. <laughs> If you come back to Monday and establish that it's only on a Monday you were doing this, then I would have allowed it. But I disagree. I give it to Sheila. You have nine seconds on Monday, starting now. My washing occupies most of that day. I put it in the machine and stand and watch it going round. And then I hang it out on the line and... You have leapt into the lead. Oh! Alongside Peter Jones and Clement Freud. And Sheila Hancock, it's your turn to begin, and the subject is whitewash. Would you talk to us on whitewash for 60 seconds, starting now? A long while ago, this was something I was quite fond of. I liked the look of white walls. But one day I woke up and felt as though I was living inside a deep freeze. And I went out and I bought a lot of wallpaper and covered the whitewash. However, if you want to engage in doing this thing, I will tell you how to start. You get a sort of brush thing that rolls backwards and forwards. Pour your paint into a little tray and rub it up and down the wall. It is rather dodgy, however, when you get to the ceilings because it's apt to drop on your hair. The thing to do is to wear a large hat. Another form of whitewashing is when people... Uh, Peter Jones is challenged. It's <laughs> not a good idea to wear a large hat because you can't see the ceiling that you're painting. <laughs> <laughs> if you wear a large hat. You don't ridiculous. have to see it, you that know it's ridiculous. there. ridiculous. You could wear a large hat like a mitre and you'd still see the ceiling. You don't need to see it anyway because you know where it is. It's a above mitre. You. <laughs> you just do that, you see, with your hat down. Don't look at it. And now you know why she hat. decided to change the whitewash <laughs> in her house. Because of the mess oh, that she was a young lady from me, Ling, who walked upside down on the ceiling. <laughs> I don't wish to hear that kind of lipstick. And the other said, Rose, and then I suppose it's a very peculiar feeling. <laughs> That little interlude, ladies and gentlemen, I have to announce that Sheila Hancock gets a point for an incorrect challenge. Yeah, she it's keeps quite the right. subject of whitewash. She has 22 seconds oh left, my starting. Oh, have I really? <laughs> Peter Jones. Did you? I, uh, no, I said now. Oh, I didn't say. I didn't hear. Peter you Jones got in. Hesitation. Yes, yeah, a no, very no. long hesitation. I was waiting for you to say go. <laughs> Actually, you spoiled your chances because you said oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> As I said now, well, so you, you didn't. Yes. Yeah. So Peter, mm. I've got to be fair. You get a, a point for a correct the challenge. Shut up, <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> there are 19 seconds left on whitewash. Starting now, you can use a brush and a bucket. That's the only equipment you need, and gallons of this stuff. Uh, Clement Freud has challenged. Why? Uh, deviation. Why? A brush and a bucket is not all you need. <laughs> <laughs> you did it to whitewash as well, Peter. <laughs> and Clement Freud has the subject of whitewash, and there are 14 seconds left, starting now. In the game of darts, in which each team tries to score 301. Uh, Peter Jones has challenged. Why? A deviation. Nothing to do with whitewash. Game well, of darts. Yes, now this is always my problem. If they do start off very definitely on another subject, how do I know when they're going to get to the subject on the car? Well, he's only got nine seconds from the start, so he can't... <laughs> so I think I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, yeah. come on. I think you've got to establish... Whitewash white... is a darts term. Is it? Yes. Well, I'm ignorant well, of darts. Well, if you've never heard of it, it is a darts term. <laughs> you get letters about this, you know. I should be writing <laughs> most of them. <laughs> I think a few dark players will be writing and sending in their points. Uh, therefore, don't be sick in the audience, please. I think if you don't know... It was the young lady of Ealing or what? 
right, uh, Clement Freud, you have a whitewashed point there, and there are 11 seconds on the subject starting now. When one team has won a game before the other has started, it is called a whitewash and is incredibly ignominious to the loser who has to go to the bar and buy drinks for all those... Just show you to be chairman of this game, you have to be up in absolutely everything. Now, Clement Freud, at the end of that round, you have gained a very commanding lead over Sheila Hancock and Peter Jones, who are equal in second place, and they are just a little ahead of Kenneth, who is in fourth place. And Peter Jones, it's your turn to begin, and the subject is noughts and crosses. Can you go on that subject, or discourse on that subject, for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, you need two players, at least, and some paper and pencil. <laughs> Uh, Sheila Hancock has challenged one. You don't need to play as I play it on my own. <laughs> Truly, I do. That's very I sort devious. of try and forget what I've done. I That's do it deviation. very quickly. But actually, Sheila... Well, I think schizophrenia is a very delicate <laughs> subject. <laughs> and I shouldn't like to introduce it. I'm inclined to give you a bonus point for that answer, actually, Peter. Well, anyway, actually, you're, you're going to get a point because I disagree with Sheila Chant. And there are 54 seconds left on knots and crosses starting now. You draw two horizontal lines and then you draw two vertical ones. Uh, Kenneth Williams is challenged one. Repetition, you draw, you draw. Yes, you draw, you draw, two, two, you, and you can't have two lots of draws in this game. <laughs> becomes only repetition but almost deviation. Kenneth, you have the subject of noughts and crosses and there are 47 seconds left starting now. A nought signifies, of course, nothing and the cross generally means multiplication. Now, I'm very good at all this and when I'm in shops and they say, oh gracious, what a lot I've got to add up here, I don't know how I'm going to manage. <laughs> I always say, just pass it over to me, dear, I'll get the old brain working on it and within no time at all I give them the answer. I have been referred to as a sort of universal calculator. To the very relation with smarts, well, wax, you see, study, you in order to pass your siren safely. And all these things can be... Uh, Sheila Hancock is just... Deviation. He's talking rubbish. <laughs> It really isn't. It sounds like rubbish. And I've heard him refer to a lot of things, but not as a whatever he says. Yes, a human calculator. I think that was pretty devious, yes. Yeah. I bet nobody in any shop has ever said to Kenneth Williams, you, you are, are a, a human calculator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I disagree with that. Uh, Sheila, you have eight seconds for knots and crosses starting now. You do need pencils or pens with which to fill in. Uh, can you finish the Well, bad all this, you need pencils and pens, and you've got to draw you like a dreary. You, we've had it, actually, Kenneth, but we haven't had it from Sheila. No. Uh, Sheila, I disagree with the challenge, so you have uh, four seconds left for noughts and crosses starting now. And you make your noughts going across on a diagonal or... Diagonal. Sheila Hancock has leapt forward at the end of that round into a very definite second place behind Clement Freud. Peter's now definitely in third place and Kenneth is still definitely in fourth place. And Kenneth, it's your turn to begin. And the subject I'm sure Ian's thought of it specially for you is Quintus Horatius Flaccus Horace. We don't want you to talk about... Flaxus. <laughs> Flaxus? Two C's, dear. As There's two C's, but I still pronounce it Flaccus. Oh, you're wrong. <laughs> Surely Flaxus will be F-L-A-C-S-U-S. -S. Well, then why should A-C-C -C in accident be accident? Then? <laughs> I'm not an why etymologist. Why wasn't Flaxus the god of wine? I never said any meaning. Who won't have to down on the ceiling? My mother said, no, 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 no. You've given me the answer. It was the young lady from Ealing. She had an accident. I see it. I see it. <laughs> yes. But I'm not an etymologist, and I've no doubt it's to do with the fact that accident is derived from the Latin. Now, uh, Kenneth, would you talk on this character for 60 seconds, uh, starting now? Well, like a friend, familiarly convey the nicest truth in the easiest way was a compliment paid by our own poet, Pope, to this gentleman, Horace, who was, of course, a Roman, and it is said forebears were slaves. So, you uh, see, he... Uh, Clement Freud, you've challenged why? Bears can't be slaves. It's deviation. He didn't say that, did he? 
four bears were slain. <laughs> right, we can get it because you can't help laughing, can you? <laughs> You can't help admiring his ingenuity. So what we do is we give him a bonus point for a clever challenge, but leave the subject with Kenneth Williams. He didn't deviate from the subject on the card of Quintus Horatius something else Horace. <laughs> Starting now. Well, he was the friend of the emperor. Of course, not always the emperor in his lifetime. Um, Clement Freud got in first. Uh, repetition of emperor. Yes, yes, I saw all their fingers go on their buzzers, but Clements eliminated the other two, because the first one to press eliminates the other buzzers, by the way, if you wanted to know that. Oh, good. Glad you're so... Uh, 28 seconds are left for Quintus Horatius Flaccus Horace uh, Clement, starting now. In the pursuit of my classical studies, both at preparatory school and at later times in my education, I never knew... Um, deviation, we don't want all this biographical rubbish about <laughs> Well, the subject is honest, not his prep school. Well, actually, I must be fair. You see, I do happen to know he did have a classical education. So, obviously, Horace probably came into it somewhere. So, I don't think, even at this stage, he was deviating from the subject on the card, Kenneth. So, he gets a point for a wrong challenge. And there are 20 seconds left, <laughs> starting now. I permanently referred to the poet Horace as Quintus Horatius Flaxus Horace because it took up more time. <laughs> and lessons in those days, you will recall, were... Uh, can Deviation, we're still on the side of his schooling, not on the side of Horace. No, he said that he, he, he was, uh, Taking up more time pronouncing his name, yes. Yes, he's being very he's clever, clever, isn't he? Not considering the education he's had, I don't think he is. We have not had a mention, <laughs> we have not had a mention of the Iambic, we've not had a mention of the Hexameters, we've not had a mention of the Satires, or the Epistles, or any of the Odes. Wait! He's just been going on a base prep school. You keep buzzing me. about that, do we? I wanted to talk about heroic couplets, you keep buzzing me. Oh, yes. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so delighted I didn't have to do it. Clement and Kenneth have made it up. They've kissed and made up. <laughs> so, Clement, you have the subject. Five seconds left, starting now. The Latin language lends itself terribly well to the heroic couplet <laughs> and amateur. So Clement Freud did really very cleverly keep going on the Horace in that round, and I have to be fair and accurate, and so he has leapt right forward and leaving the other three somewhat behind. And Clement Freud, we're back with you, playing the market. Can you talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Quintus Horatius, Jackson's <laughs> Horace. <laughs> this is plain deviation. I'm Jimmy not having it. I'm not going to sit here idly while people just go round and round the subject. I mean, what's Horace got to do with playing the market? Well, he probably played the market in Roman times for all we Get out of it. He was a poet on a Sabine psalm. <laughs> He, well, that means that Clement Freud feet. considers himself a bit of a poet, and he plays the market. How oh, what do we... Our ladies and gentlemen, let you, with us, your superior intelligence and knowledge and wisdom, be the final judge. Cla I must be fair, Clem Kenneth did uh, challenge very, very rapidly before Clement had a chance to establish anything. But if you agree with uh, Kenneth's challenge, you can boo, which means Kenneth gets the point. But if you disagree with his challenge, you cheer and you all do it together now. <laughs> I think... Hey! Quiet. <laughs> All right, the booze have it. Kenneth, they're on your side. They obviously want to hear about from you about playing the market. You have a point and 55 seconds for the subject, starting now. Well, the last time I played the market, I got a wonderful reception. In fact, they <laughs> made me a present, a Bonneton Crescent, and threw it a brick at a time. I was an enormous success in markets in Malaya and India, and of course, <laughs> leave us not forget the new territories area of China, where I was an enormous success. As the um, uh, Sheila Hancock has challenged. Deviation, I just don't believe all this. You mean you don't believe that he was a great success in the markets of Red China? Oh, not really, no. Nor do I. <laughs> Fair enough. Sheila, Peter Jones, what do you want to say? Well, I know somebody who actually saw his performance, and I, it embarrasses me to go into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd, 
rather not say anything, actually. I'm not going... I won't say a word. That's the best thing. The most discreet thing I can do is to button up and be absolutely silent about it. <laughs> you have been for the last five minutes, Peter. Yes. It's very nice to have heard from you. All right, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt, because it appears, thanks to Peter Jones's verification, that you do play in a market now. So you have 35 seconds on the markets of Carl Loop. No, playing the market... Starting now. I had cars there so honest in Cairo, and when I was there in 1956, I left my wristwatch on the left post. And the other bloke said, and when you went back, was it still there? And I was supposed to say, no, the lamppost wasn't, but the watch was. And I said, the lamppost was, but the watch wasn't, which was very funny, because it ruined his work, you see. And he had this kill, and he made up an S. Yes, there was a young lady of Ealing. Uh, Sheila, you have challenged. Now, a deviation, that isn't anything to do with playing the market, is it? Well, why don't you have him on repetition? He said the... Repetition, <laughs> yes, that's what I no. meant. I, do, I think I agree, actually. I agree on even on deviation that, that he's not playing the market now. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's fooling about in the marketplace. Yeah. Sheila, I'm with you on this one. You have a point and you have 14 seconds on playing the market starting now. Take it in, in the sense that you mean the stock market. I am singularly unsuccessful at this. I've only ventured it twice and both times the firm went bankrupt. So therefore, my bank manager said to me, will you do me a favour and not... Well, everybody gained points in that round, except Clement Freud, but he's still very much in the lead. Sheila, your turn to begin. The subject is sweet peas. Would you talk to us on that delightful subject for 60 seconds starting now? These are the ones that come straight from the pod in the early pickings. They really are sweet. And to make them even more so, you add a drop of sugar with the mint when you boil them. Also, they are a most adorable flower with a perfume that's unbelievable. At the moment in the country, they're all blooming and it's a lovely sight. They're all colours of the rainbow and they're... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged why. They're not. What? All colours of the rainbow. No. no, I don't think they are all colours. I don't think they're blooming now either, Sheila. They are. The sweet peas are blooming in the last <laughs> <laughs> right, there was a young lady who walked on a greenhouse ceiling. Right, uh, uh, Clement, I agree with your challenge. The subject is sweet peas. You have 31 seconds left, starting now. Sweet peas are flowers which are very seldom given to people as buttonholes because orchids, daffodils and rhododendrons are considered more suitable. I find uh, this... Peter Jones' challenge. Absolute rubbish. Of course they aren't. Rhododendrons aren't suitable as buttonholes. No, of course not. Who ever thought a rhododendron were? in a buttonhole? If a sweet pea is not suitable, there's certainly a rhododendron isn't. It depends what? on the button. It depends on the hole, too. Hey, a great thing. <laughs> Nick, are you challenging me? Oh, you can ask. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with Peter Jones's challenge of a sweet pea. Are your proclivities? <laughs> <laughs> the program is breaking up. Have you noticed? Ages ago. Ages ago it broke Come up. On your um, side. I wasn't aware, actually, at that particular moment that uh, Kenneth Williams was actually speaking rather quietly in one of his character voices. If the listeners at home heard him, I apologise for speaking together, but um, we'll just carry on as best we can. Uh, Clement, I agree with Peter's challenge, so he gets the subject of sweet peas, and there are 20 seconds left starting now. Sweet peas were, believe it or not, first cultivated in Wem in Shropshire, where I was born, by a firm called Eckford's. Florists, They're out of business now, so I'm not advertising them. And they made the mistake of selling seconds, which they distributed very cheaply, and then everybody in the world wanted to grow. Well, Peter Jones was speaking at the end of that round, so he gained the extra point. And alas, with Sweet Peas, we have to wind up the show because we have no more time. Uh, to tell you the final result, uh, Kenneth Williams was only just in fourth place, one point behind Peter Jones, who just went into third place again on the last round. He was two points behind Sheila Hancock, who was quite a number of points behind this week's undoubted winner, Clement Freud. <laughs> hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute and will want to tune in again next time. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye.
chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The program was devised by Ian Mester and produced by Simon Brent. And Kenneth Williams, Clement Freud, Peter Jones, and Amy MacDonald in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Hello and welcome to Just a Minute, and it is a great pleasure to welcome back Amy MacDonald, who's going to try and pit her wits and her ability against these three experienced male and regular players of the game. And, um, as usual, I'm going to ask them to speak if they can for just one minute on some unlikely subject without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating from the subject on the card which is in front of me. And we're going to begin the show this week with Clement Freud. Clement, would you talk to us on my opinion? for 60 seconds, starting now. It is my opinion that this game, called Just a Minute, is being run entirely the wrong way. To begin with, the panelists should be far better and more serious people. But even leaving them aside, the audience here is an absolute disgrace. <laughs> at the very least, they could come here. Uh, Kenneth Williams is challenging. Sure. This is a disgrace. He's supposed to speak on the subject of my opinion, and he's lively in this lovely house. I mean, look at well, uh, the lovely house. They're beautiful people. They're all glowing here with with welcome and goodwill written over them. And I think it's a disgrace that he should lie below. Well, I have to give the decision to Clement Thank Freud you because very much indeed. That's my subject. No, well, I Kenneth <laughs> Williams. <laughs> While I agree with you wholeheartedly about our audience, and maybe it is tactless to malign them in that way, Clement Freud was not deviating from my opinion because that was his opinion. So he gains a point for a wrong challenge. He keeps the subject 40 seconds to go. My opinion, Clement, starting now. It is my opinion that a studio audience would wear black shoes, somber socks, dark shirts, and a tie befitting of the seriousness of this occasion. Uh, Amy McDonald has challenged. Why? Um, it's well... It's deviation. Yes, that's Because it's not, it not a serious show. Exactly. It's that's well done, exactly Amy what I wanted to You say. have got a point for a correct challenge. <laughs> and, um, and you have 29 seconds on my opinion, Amy, starting now. Well, my opinion doesn't normally hold much weight. But one day a friend of mine came to me and said, Look, I've got to go to this wedding and I've got to find a hat. And she thought, for some strange, unknown reason, I would know all about hats. So I said to Lavinia, that was her name, OK, I'll come with you. So we both set off one day to look for this uh, thing you put on your... Uh, Clement Freud is challenged. Hesitation. Yes. How mean could you... Yes, ungallant, wasn't it? Ungallant. Yes. There she was. She was in the middle of her flow. Yes. Wasn't and she? I was trying she to... She was just getting all under with her. She searched for... I don't know work. how you could do that, Clement. I don't know, honestly, how you could do that. I did it quite easily. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Clement, whatever we feel about your challenge, it was a correct one, so you take the subject back, and there are five seconds to go on my opinion starting now. It is my opinion that there ought to be more beautiful people here. <laughs> Nice alienate an audience and get them to clap at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, when the whistle goes, it tells us that 60 seconds is up and whoever is speaking at that particular moment gains an extra point and in spite of the booze, it was Clement Freud. Clement, you have a lead at the end of the first round and Kenneth Williams, you begin the next round. The subject, Nosy Parkers. <laughs> seem to like the idea of that subject with you, Kenneth, so will you go on it for 60 seconds, starting now? The man that gave his name to this expression was renowned in a place called Dera Dun, or Dun, depending on how we interpret the signs or hieroglyphics on the appropriate piece of paper or ivory card, as it is known in the trade. This place is in the United Provinces... 
in the northern part of India, and I had the privilege of serving there with Her Majesty's forces, and therefore heard about this man's... Uh, Clement Floyd is challenged. Why? Deviation. Why? They were His Majesty's services at the time that Phyllis Williams... <laughs> Very clever. You've already got a party as an audience. They're cheering for Kenny. You're not going to allow that, are you, Nicholas? You're not going to allow that, are you? You're not going to allow that, are you? <laughs> He's come out of his seat to intimidate me. To physically intimidate me, listeners. I have to agree with the correct challenge and say Clement Freud has a point and the subject, and there are 27 seconds on Nosy Parker's Clement starting now. In the sixth row of the audience, there is one particular Nosy Parker whose name it would be very wrong to disclose. But as soon as I came in, she looked at uh, me. Peter Jones, the challenge. Well, he's not talking about Nosy Parker in the plural. He has chosen one uh, particular no, no. Nosy Parker in the audience. Peter, it's a subtle challenge, but the point is, if the subject's in the plural, it is obvious you can take a singular version of it. It's obvious? Yes, I think so. Yes, you I talk see. about oh, Jones. Why is it a subtle challenge if it's obvious? <laughs> I suppose the thought was subtle, but the challenge was not. Uh, Clement Freud, you are with Nosy Parker still, and there are 17 seconds left, starting now. Does your mother take in washing? Has she sold her mango? Uh, Kenneth Williams... Deviation. This has nothing to do with the subject. All right, Kenneth... Does your mother take in washing? It's total deviation. Well, it's a sort of remark a Nosy Parker might make, Nonsense. A Nosy Parker does not question in that fashion. Well, a Nosy Parker endeavours to find out what your business is. And that's what they were and doing. And not what your you? mother's business. Your mother's business. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you know, all right, right, you see, I'm seeing you, you can't get your words out, can you? I haven't got it out, had I? <laughs> He was straight if in we let you get, If I let you get all your words out, nobody else will ever speak on this program, Kenneth. <laughs> oh, they are painting a most unfair picture. The point is, now, Kenneth, on, I'm no you can, uh, uh, can, trying to be fair as I have to be, you right, can yes. say that by inquiring about your mother's business, you could also be a nosy parker in a subtle way of finding out about your business. And you were saying a nosy parker is a little bit more subtle. I tell you what I'll do is you'll give me an impossible decision to make. I will be fair and put it to the audience. No, who I should always... give it to him. I know what the audience is like. <laughs> you now realise, Clement, that perhaps it doesn't always pay to alienate your audience. It never, ever pays. Well, let us see, shall we? Do you agree with Clement, uh, Kenneth Williams' last challenge? If you agree with Kenneth Chen, if you disagree, boo, and all do it together now. They're 100% behind Kenneth Williams. So, Kenneth, you have the subject 13 seconds on Nosy pa Sorry, 14 seconds, Nosy Parker's starting now. This gentleman, as I say, made my acquaintance. He uh, would rather speak. Uh, Clement Freud is challenged. Hesitation. Yes, but, oh, yes. but he... Uh, as I, uh, well, yeah, it was, oh, it was so close, wasn't it? We'll give him the benefit of the doubt to Kenneth Williams on this occasion and tell him that he has nine seconds on Nosy Parker starting now. He said, would you care to drink with me a Carew's gin, which is not the same as any kind that is manufactured or made, as perhaps Clement Freud would prefer me to express it in this country. <laughs> Go on, come out with it. I'm in the lead, now. Behind Clement Freud. Oh. <laughs> so we go on to the next round. Peter Jones, your turn to begin. The story I have never told anyone. Would you talk about that for just one minute, starting now? Yes. Well, I think it is high time that I revealed it. It began in the ladies' cloakroom at <laughs> Broadcasting House. Uh, Amy McDonald has challenged. Why? Uh, deviate. He wouldn't be in the ladies' cloak, would he? That would be very he devious if he room. was. Yes. Yes. But he said the story began. No, he said he was there, did he? He was in the ladies' cloak. Well, that is utterly devious. Well, that's why, that's why I've never told him before. <laughs> Uh, 
of course, we realize that's the reason you never told it before, but I must agree with Amy, it is a devious situation and a devious thought, and therefore... Well, I don't think it's devious. But it's not deviating the from the story the I've never story. told anyone, so therefore, I'm, you know, it's very difficult. You see how my problems, don't you? Yes, Mr. you just give me a bonus point and tell me to get on with it. That's all you have. <laughs> uh, shall, shall I take my challenge back? No, you don't take it. It's no. a wrong challenge. It was a good challenge, but incorrect, Amy. So uh, no. Peter has a point oh, for I an incorrect challenge. He has 48 seconds on the story I've never told anyone starting now. And I was joined by the BBC Northern Orchestra. <laughs> And they said, what are we going to do? A lady's coming up the stairs. <laughs> well, this placed me in a very embarrassing position. Fortunately, the phone was working. So I dialed a number wildly, not really being able to recall the particular digits which would connect me with the caretaker or the porter down in the reception hall, which I happen to know was full of other orchestra players. Uh, Clement, <laughs> Freud is challenged. Repetition of orchestra. Yes, what a pity. Yes, <laughs> yeah, pity really, yes. Yeah, a story, but, uh, Clement Freud got in with six million seconds to go on the story I've never told anyone starting now. It was on a Tuesday evening in Romilly Street in the centre. Uh, Kenneth Williams' challenge, why? I don't believe any Tuesday evening Romilly Street was hanging about waiting for anything to happen. It might be every Tuesday in Romilly Street and uh, you never know, <laughs> do you? I just don't think it has the ring of truth about it. I've got to go on instinct. I don't work on Well, all right, Kenneth, you may go on instinct, but he's still not deviating from the subject, the do story. Do you mean to say you're giving it to him? <laughs> I have to be fair, the story... There's only a few seconds to go. If you give it to me, I might leap into the lead. I know. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks that they can get in just before the whistle goes. But I'm afraid it was a wrong challenge. So Clement Freud has another point, and he has the subject for another two seconds, the story I've never told anyone, starting now. Listen very carefully. <laughs> End of that round with the unintentional aiding of others. Clement Freud has increased his lead over everybody else. Amy McDonald, your turn to begin. A lovely subject that Ian Messett has thought of for you to talk on: being desirable. Would you talk about that for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, being desirable is rather a difficult thing to be because you have. Um, Peter, Ch Peter Jones's challenge. Well, I don't agree. I mean, it quite obviously oh, just isn't. Because you are desirable. Oh well, that's very sweet of you. <laughs> Look, you can have my point any time you like. <laughs> She's got a point for an incorrect choice. Yes. And she keeps it, and there are 55 seconds on being desirable, Amy, starting now. But there are times when you just... Do you know that feeling? You just know you're desirable. Uh, Clement Ford is challenged. I take it back. I, I no, was, if you, you I'm a repetition of just, just that. Yes, I know. And it's very, it was very unjust. I thought it was mean. Very unjust, yes. And this is just a minute, yes. so you can say just only in this round only. So there's 50 seconds left on being desirable, Amy, starting now. I mean, there are days when you feel positively undesirable, and that's very bad. But then you get moments when you just know it's all happening. For instance, if you have a boyfriend and he takes you out for the first time and he uh, likes Clement Freud is challenged. Deviation. Why? I wouldn't have a boyfriend who took me out for the first time. <laughs> She's no. asking us to suppose. <laughs> what does she ask you to suppose? If you have a boyfriend and he takes you out for the first time. Yeah, but time. if Amy McDonald says, if you have a boyfriend <laughs> who takes you out for the first time, it is perfectly natural, normal, and not devious when Amy says it. Oh, Thank okay. you. Can I carry on now, please? Yes, you've got another point, Amy. No, don't worry. These uh, wrong mm. challenges give you more points. Oh, good. How yeah. many is that now? You've got, <laughs> you've got four. You've leapt into a very strong second place behind our leader. And how many <laughs> seconds have I got to go? You have got uh, 35 seconds to go. Oh. Do you want I to think it's sun? worth your while going on with it, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to know what the subject is as well? Oh, yes, please. Uh, good. Uh, being desirable. <laughs> Thank you. Starting uh, now. Now. And he takes you out, as I was saying before. Now, you just know when you... Kenneth Williams has challenged. Well, uh, repetition, she says as she was saying no, before. No, I, I said and that. And indeed, she has said it before. I said we're all she sick and tired of <laughs> All right. You're just so, jealous, Kenny. Yes, you're so right. You <laughs> have uh, another point, and you have 30 seconds on being desirable, Amy, starting now. Thank you. The point you get to when you really... Uh, Kenny Williams has challenged. point twice. Twice we had before. Was point she said twice before. I was talking about a different point. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, as I wouldn't allow Ke Clements just, I'd better not allow your point and let her keep the subject still with another point. And there are 30, 27 seconds on being desirable, Amy, starting now. When he leans across the table to light your cigarette and the cigarette lighter shakes... Uh, Kenneth Williams. Two cigarettes. Yes, I think we must allow the cigarette. Oh, no, one was a cigarette and one was a cigarette lighter. I know, but it was too late. I mean, sorry, it wasn't too late, but I thought you were going to say a cigar, but... No, no, you did say the word cigarette twice. Cigarette lighter is hyphenated. Yes, yes. My is it? Yes. 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 Is it? Yes. This is, I didn't know that. No, it's not. Such a <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. It is hyphenated. She can say cigarette uh, holder. Oh, well, what's going on here? The audience, do you, do you think there's a, if you think there's a hyphen between cigarettes Nobody and a chair, they don't and if know you don't, nothing we'll nothing. all do it together now. Look at him. Come from Stan. Nothing! <laughs> The audience say Amy yes. MacDonald has it, and she has 19 seconds on being desirable starting now. And the apparatus in his hand begins to wobble. <laughs> I've not come here to listen to a load of filth. It's perfectly obvious why she's succeeding on this day, and half of them are women. Look at them. Of them rolling. Look at the flesh going. It's disgusting, isn't what's it? The, what's the challenge, Kenneth? Well, all this deviation about him sitting opposite her with apparatus. <laughs> One minute he's taking her out to dinner, the next minute they're in a chemical laboratory. Or <laughs> well, if you've got to think of another word for cigarette lighter, even if it's his hyphenated, <laughs> an apparatus is quite a good word to use, isn't it? Mm, well, it's it... obvious what side you're on. <laughs> if apparatus means something else to you, then I'm very sorry, Kenneth. <laughs> Fifteen seconds uh, with you, Amy, on being desirable, starting now. Then you know you must be desirable. If, however, the thing in he's holding... <laughs> Don't give it to him. Give it to uh, him. challenge. I thought she hesitated holding her thing. It was the man who was holding the thing. Yes, but there was definitely hesitation there. <laughs> yes, he did hesitate. <laughs> I'm not surprised in the situation. I think Amy MacDonald has become quite beyond the continuing anyway. So. so we'll give you a hesitation for that, Clement, with ten seconds on being desirable starting now. <laughs> Right <laughs> Four seconds he paused with the thought of him being desirable. And so, Amy, you have five seconds to go on being desirable starting now. Another thing you notice is little beads of water on the man's foot. <laughs> I think, dear Mister, you must be much more careful in the subjects you choose for this game. <laughs> Especially, uh, if you started with Clement Freud on being desirable, that would have been different. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of that round, you will not be surprised to hear that in spite of a little encouragement from the chairman and help from the others, Amy MacDonald has very definitely leapt into the lead. <laughs> Clement, it is your turn to begin, and this, this subject is poses. Can you talk on that subject for just a minute, starting now? If you stand on a plinth with your hands raised high and your feet apart, many would say that you are striking a pose. On the other hand, if you lie down on a foot, that also would be posing. Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. Hesitation. Yes, I would agree with that hesitation. It's such a boring subject, isn't it? <laughs> Poses. Yes, yes, but there we are. We, we have the desirable ones and we yeah. have the... <laughs> Kenneth Williams is now striking a pose to get in the mood to talk for 44 seconds on the subject starting now. During the period when there was what we would now describe as an epidemic in London, but what was then discussed as something other, in other words, the plague, judges in the courts of England were asked to bear with them and their retinue a helpful... Uh, Peter Jones has challenged. Hesitation. Shut your row, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what a nerve. Yeah, I mean, well, the way he's just there... Hesitation. 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 Hesit
imagine. Yeah, yes. but you can have it for hesitation. Oh, you're just... wonderful, you are. There's only one thing you can't do, and that's behave like a gentleman. <laughs> I, I'm renowned. I'm Let renowned. You. I've had letters, dearie. I've had letters saying, what a gent. What a gent you are. <laughs> I've had letters. <laughs> Have you had letters to that effect? No, that's why you've gone red. Look at his face. <laughs> No manners at all. Uh, which, uh, which person wrote all those letters? Oh, some nasty I old don't... man. He always meets outside. I don't know. <laughs> Peter, you have a correct challenge, and you have 25 seconds on poses starting now. They're what really killed the music hall in England. They used to have nudes standing about with nothing on. Often they were accompanied by a rather grandiose commentary, and they aped the positions of the models in famous pictures, like the, uh, well... Uh, Clement Freud's challenge. Hesitation. One second on poses with you, Clement, starting now. Poses are different. And, uh... Having got in cleverly before the whistle went, I'm afraid Clement Freud has once again taken the lead. What do you mean you're afraid? Yes, you're quite right. What do you mean, I'm afraid? Well, he's afraid you... of what the audience will do to oh, him. <laughs> Thank you very yes. much, Peter. That was I one see. of the things I was yes. afraid of. Kenneth Williams, your turn to begin. The subject, King Harold, 60 seconds, starting now. Well, I suppose every schoolboy knows about this classic battle which took place actually not in Hastings, a little outside, and the <coughs> occasion... Amy McDonald's challenge, why? Why does he put on that funny voice? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but what's your, your challenge? I just wanted to know, is it because it sort of elongates everything he's trying to say? Are you ch ch challenging for hesitation? Uh, I suppose yes, to widen his range yes. well, well, and get I different think kinds of work. It was sufficiently elongated to be his nature. I couldn't. I thought he'd actually paused. So, Amy, I agree well, with that, did, Chuck. Yes, it's the way yes, you talk. All right, I'm with you. Kenneth, you shouldn't talk like that. You oh, know. I like him talking like that. <laughs> yes, but it, it, it does bring in pauses on occasion. So there are 47 seconds for you on King Harold's <laughs> end of the world, starting now. I don't know very much about King Harold. Uh, Kenneth Williams, the I think there's nothing about King Harold. Why don't you just shut up now? <laughs> So, what is your challenge? Deviation. Well, I'm afraid it wasn't, because the, even if you don't know much about it, you've still got to try and keep going, so she has another point, and 44 seconds for King Harold starting now. I'm quite sure he was a very powerful man, and probably wore one of those ruggy things all the time. You know? uh, Kenneth Williams' has challenged what? I think the entire audience in this theatre would like to know what is one of those ruddy things. <laughs> well, what is your challenge? Deviation. Oh, what is this term and why is she using it? I mean, if she can't talk in plain English, then we're all obviously wasting our time here. She's already questioned my delivery, and we're all like, say, is her sitting there going, oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> So what's your challenge now? What's your challenge? I mean, what about all the apparatus and the eye boys? What's your challenge? Deviation. No, she didn't actually say what the thing he was on was wearing, but she said it was one of those funny things or something like that. 37 seconds on King Harold, Amy, starting now. It's usually made of wool when it's not knitted and just hangs out in little bits. That was a challenge. Why? Well, she stopped. I know she did. Pardon? So you have a point in the... Uh, what did I do? You stopped, in other words, you paused. I was letting the laugh go. <laughs> I know, but when Clement Freud let, let the laugh go on a very good thing, he, he paused for four oh, seconds. No, and you, and you got in on him. No, I must be fair. You got in on him on that occasion. Yeah. So 30 seconds on King Harold with you, Clement, starting now. William the Conqueror was said to have won that Battle of Hastings in the year 1066. And there are many who would agree because as a result of the Norman Conquest, the English language was debased and became a sort of French... Um, uh, Peter Jones, uh, uh, hesitation. Yes, 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 yes. yes I would have agreed. <laughs> Nineteen seconds for you, Peter, on King Harold starting now. Picture the scene on this battlefield just outside the famous resort of Eastbourne. And there, with the green fields stretching out as far as the eye could see... <laughs> Peter Jones, 
to then speak him when the whistle went, so he gained the extra point for speaking at that particular moment. Well, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, we have no more time to play just a minute. So let me give you the final score at the end of this particular game. Kenneth Williams finished only just in fourth place, two points behind Peter Jones, who was in third place, who was four points behind Clement Freud, who was only one point behind our new and giggly and delightful and pretty winner, Amy MacDonald. We do hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute and we'll want to tune in again next time. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The program was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by Simon Brett. And Kenneth Williams, Clement Freud, Peter Jones and Andre Melly in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Hello and welcome to Just a Minute. And once again, we're delighted to welcome back into the fourth seat Andre Melly to pit her wits against our three regular male competitors in Just a Minute. And once again, I'm going to ask them to speak, if they can, for just one minute on some unlikely subject without hesitation, without repetition, and, of course, without deviating from the subject on the card in front of me. And we're going to begin the show this week with Peter Jones. Peter, would you talk about the multitude... The multitude for 60 seconds starting now. Well, that has a kind of biblical ring about it. Reminds me of the meal of loaves and fishes. But nowadays, it really refers to the great mass of people who decide what kind of entertainment is going to be provided on television, for instance. One third of them usually answer the Gallup pollster yes, and the other section of an equal size say no and a last and final uh, cross. <laughs> oh, Andre Melly challenged. Uh, hesitation. Yes, he couldn't cry and divide the sections and portions and departments up. But well tried, Peter. You did keep going for 32 seconds without being interrupted. I agree with Andre's challenge of hesitation, so she gets a point. She takes over the subject. 28 seconds on the multitude starting now. I think that one could use this word not only in the context of people, but perhaps insects, locusts, for instance. One might uh, refer to a great amount of these Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peter Jones has challenged. Uh, hesitation. Yes, I agree. Yes, more of a dry up than a hesitation. But there are 13 seconds now on the multitude with you, Peter, starting now. This other group of people usually say they don't know. But I would like to make this appeal to them, all these individuals whom one masses together in this... is speaking when the whistle goes, and as you know, the whistle tells us that 60 seconds up gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Peter Jones who started with the subject, and therefore he has a commanding lead at the end of the first round. In fact, Clement Floyd and Kenneth Williams have hardly to speak yet. Andre Melly, will you begin this one? The present I most like to receive. Would you talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? The present I most like to receive is one that I give to myself then I know it's going to be something I really want and I don't have to get my face ready with that expression of rapturous delight when somebody else gives you a gift and you have that sinking feeling you're going to hate it. I am lucky enough to have several things which I bestow upon me because, for example, my mother... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged. It's deviation of grammar. <laughs> You bestow it on yourself, not on you. Yes, I think as we do play this game fairly toughly, uh, that um, it's probably it's a legitimate challenge, and you have a point, Clement, and the subject. <laughs> Thirty-four and a half seconds on the present I most like to receive, starting now. The present I most like to receive is wine. And I don't care at all whether this beverage comes 
from Austria or Germany, Yugoslavia, Romania, nay, even California. France produces this stuff in Burgundy as well as in Bordeaux, and I think that of the latter province, known as Claret in this country, I like more than other. In fact, if anybody asks me what the present I would most like to receive is, it is not sack, definitely not beer, not even cider. <laughs> He was challenged on the buzzer, but he just got in in time. I don't know what, I think it was Andre challenged. What was it going to be? But there were three knots I within know. the last half second. There were. You should have got in. them little words. You should have got in. <laughs> uh, Clement, you gained the point for speaking when the whistle went. You have now crept up on Peter Jones, and we have come round to you, Kenneth, a moment that a lot of us wait for with great pleasure in just a minute. Would you talk on people I enjoy? For 60 seconds, starting now. People I enjoy are the kind that can always have recourse to a charming, racy, or amusing uh. anecdote, depending, of course, <laughs> on one's proclivities in these matters. Mine are manifold, and nothing is more delightful than to have those about me whose mental activity is so full of a lack and inner joy and, I would add, nobility that the evening seems almost to race by and one looks at the heavy jowls and the beards that adorn the faces of these collocutors and one thinks, oh, what a joyous day it was that I first came upon this wonderfully energetic countenance and those eyes, almost sapphire blue, reminding one in a strange way of the Mediterranean. <laughs> William started with the subject. They would just be nice. I must have repeated myself somewhere. No, actually, Kenneth, you didn't. You did it really beautifully and magnificently, and you kept going. I must say, the last ten seconds was very tense. Oh. We were all wondering whether you were going to keep it up. Because, Wasn't tense for me. I was I mean, very loose. You must <laughs> have a lot of very enjoyable people about you, because I could see from the way you were looking, you were describing their country. Mm, did you get the reference to Kenneth? Yes, we did got you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I also got the reference to me. <laughs> anyway, you did magnificent, and of course you get a bonus point Thanks. for keeping going without stopping. Peter Jones, <laughs> you will begin the next round. People I don't enjoy. Can you talk on that subject now for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, there aren't so many of them as the ones I do enjoy. But, for instance, when I'm approaching in my car at T-junction, and the car coming from my um, right... Oh, Clement Freud. Two cars. Yes, I'm afraid yes, if you're going sorry, to I talk said, about uh, motoring... Internal combustion engine or something. Yes, yes quite. <laughs> Automobile or another one, yes, but not a car again. 49 seconds left. People I don't enjoy, Clement, starting now. People I particularly don't enjoy are those who press buzzers at inopportune moments <laughs> when I'm in the middle of speaking intelligently about a subject such as people I don't enjoy. As I love Andre Melly very much, I forgive her completely, but there are other people whom I loathe and despise, in particular the ones who didn't come here today because last week we had an absolutely rotten audience. <laughs> and I'm so glad that no one is here this evening because you're... Uh, all... Peter Jones has challenged. He said, here, here, twice. I mean, he said, <laughs> repeat it here. And I was pretty nice about the audience doing it. <laughs> yes, you we were, very nice. All right, Peter, that's a very tough challenge. He it did is say, very tough, Peter, but you know. if he makes the challenge, I have to be fair within the rules of the game, and he did repeat here, so, uh, Peter, you get the point. Eleven seconds for people I don't enjoy, starting now. And they jostle one in post offices. They push one off the moving... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged. Repetition of one. Yes, oh. you're going to be tough that way, you get a tough oh, one it's back, awful. Peter. So five yeah. seconds now, and people I don't enjoy, Clement, starting now. Let me have men about me who are loose. How disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 
way all the way from King's Cross, a family show. Uh, and just... Ken, if I'm terribly confused, last uh, few weeks back you established that you moved to Baker Street. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, as your comment was devious, obviously your challenge was devious, and therefore it was incorrect, and therefore Clement Freud has another point of the three seconds on people I don't enjoy, Clement, starting now. I don't enjoy people who wear therapeutic sandals at me. <laughs> Clement Foy, with the help of some incorrect challenges, uh, managed to gain a number of points in that round, including one for speaking when the whistle went, so he has gained a commanding lead at the end of the round. <laughs> Andre Milley, back with you, subject playing safe. Would you talk on that for 60 seconds, starting now? The very best way of playing safe is, I suppose, to be dead. Then you can't have any catastrophe uh, before Clement, you Clement, 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 this is ridiculous. Obviously, people who are dead can't play safe, nor can they play anything else, can they? I, mean, I think devious, that's a very good point. Once you're dead, for... it's finished. You're not playing safe or playing anything, are you? Yeah. Well said. All right, Kenneth, you have a point for that. And 42 seconds on playing safe, starting now. It is, of course, to be so morally neutral and I would say in every other sense that you sit on the fence and in the process split yourself right up the middle. <laughs> now various people disapprove of this kind of behaviour and those who supported the Chamberlain administration and the one that was accused so often of being appeasers during the crisis that blew up over that business with Adolf Hitler. Well, they all can Melly has challenged oh, you going on and on and on, all about history, and he's not talking anymore about playing safe. Well, if anybody plays safe, I'm going to support playing safe. Yes, all right, <laughs> Kenneth, I'm supporting you. I yeah. think the point he's making oh. was that Chamberlain... It's right when she rushes in and attacks you. Have you noticed that? She yes, I've noticed rushes. you do the same on occasions, too, mm. Kenneth. Only with justification. <laughs> Only when I am provoked, you see, that's why. She was provoked then. <laughs> oh. And she felt that her challenge was justified, but I'm afraid I disagree with yeah. that. So you get another point and you continue with playing safe. Ten seconds starting now. And I have actually been given banknotes and people have played safe with me and said, will you look after them on our behalf? <laughs> So then Kenneth Williams was speaking when the whistle went, and he has leapt forward at the end of that round, which he loves to do, but alas, only into second place. But he's ahead of Peter Jones and Andre Menny and Clement Freud. Your turn to begin. The subject, striking oil. Would you talk about that in 60 seconds, starting now? One of the absolutely certain things about striking oil is that oil will come up. Get a spoon and wham it, bash it, hit it, or animate the surface in any other way, and the result will be a small gusher, which will be exactly as edible or attractive as the substance which you agitated in the first place. There are, at the moment, in the channel around our coasts, a number of companies who are actually looking for oil of... Um, Peter Jones has challenged. Well, they're not in the channel. They are looking for oil in the North Sea. They are certainly looking for oil in the North Sea. I don't know if they're looking for oil in the, in the channel, channel, he said. Well, all right. I, there may be companies looking for oil in the channel. There may be companies we don't know about. You see, this is my problem on decisions. <laughs> so I think in a situation such as this, I have to put it to the superior wisdom and judgment of our charming and delightful audience. Well, they don't know whether people <laughs> are looking for it. <laughs> Matter, Peter. Hey, no, this is the way I get out of an impossible decision. They may not know, they may have no idea at all, but they will give a decision. So if you agree that they are looking for oil in the English Channel, you should. didn't say the English Channel. He didn't say No, in the channels around our coast. In other words, if you agree with Peter's challenge, you boo. And if you disagree with his challenge, you cheer. And you all do it together now. <laughs> You're booing. So what does that mean? You're booing his challenge, so you're with Clement Freud? No. Oh. No. Oh, you're with Peter Jones, are you? Like, but most of them chaired anyway. <laughs> why do they got a chairman on this program who can think? All right, so, um... They might be onto a good thing here. They seem to know where the oil is. <laughs> All right. 
Well, anyway, you've struck oil with this audience, yes. Peter. You have a point because the audience consider your challenge was justified and the subject. And there are 27 seconds on striking oil starting now. And they're looking for it around the coast of Australia. Um, Clement Moyer's challenge. Deviation. Why? The subject is striking oil, not looking for it. It doesn't matter. You've got to look for it before you can strike it. Sir Peter Jones has another point, and there are 24 seconds on striking oil <laughs> starting now. And any moment now, we may hear the news that they have struck oil there. Now, in America, on one of the film lots around, I think, 20th Century Fox, they discovered, even in the last decade, that they were sitting on a gold mine in the sense that the oil underneath amounted to the value of several million. <laughs> Oh, Peter Jones was then speaking when the whistle went, so he has moved forward in that round and taken second place ahead of Kenneth, but still behind Clement Freud, our leader. And Kenneth, your turn to begin. The English Gog and Magog. One of those delightful subjects that I think Ian Mester thinks of especially for you. But would you now talk on it for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, these are, of course, the remnant of this race of giants who are descended from this Emperor Diocletian. But there are two effigies, you know, which did stand for some time outside Guild Hall, and therefore English Gog and Magog, I think, must specifically refer to these things. They were carved beautifully in a sort of stone, probably Portland and they represented, I would say, primeval forces. And it's interesting, like gargoyles on a cathedral, how Western man, with his sophisticated and civilised way of life, has on occasion delight in resorting to these symbols of the past, like Gog and Magog, who perhaps cast your imaginative faculties way back into the mists of antiquity. And a writer like Morley, who will discuss druidic customs and things like... Uh... Oh, Clement Freud is challenged. Repetition of things like... You rotten um, thing. You only had four seconds to go. <laughs> about the... as long as I wish to talk about Gog and Magog. <laughs> 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 well said, uh, Clever. But uh, yes, we thought for once we were going to have a unique record in just a minute. Somebody was going to keep going on the subject they started with twice in the same show. It didn't quite happen. Clement Freud, you have a point four seconds on the English Gog and Magog starting now. I first came across Gog and Magog in a Latin gender rhyme. <laughs> getting in then before the whistle gain the extra point and increase his lead at the end of that round Peter Jones we're back with you what I do at midnight <laughs> now, why should you laugh at the thought of what Peter Jones might do at midnight you must have horrid minds or very unkind ones Peter Jones that's the subject would you talk on it for 60 seconds starting now well, it's not something that I really want to discuss. Uh, Kenneth Williams, we know what you're going to say. Yes, yeah, quite. Well, if you know what I'm going to say, you don't need me to say it, do you? <laughs> if you haven't said anything... Well, you presumably are going to tell them. You say you know what I'm going to say. Tell yes. Them. Well, tell them then. You're going to say... Well, if he doesn't know what he's going to say, let him shut up and let me get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> on the contrary, the point of this game is to discuss what you give us on a card, right? Yes. He says he doesn't want to discuss it, so I say give the subject to me. <laughs> yes, you put it beautifully. Yes, is the word he was searching for. Yeah. But I'm going to discuss. Oh, why don't you shut your round? Give someone else a chance. You've done nothing but talk on this show. It's always the same. You come here and dominate it. It's a disgrace. <laughs> yes. He said, I don't want to talk about it, he said. That's All what right. he said. But if you don't want to talk about it, you shut up. I'll have a go. <laughs> Even if he doesn't want to talk about it, the object of the game is to try and talk about it, which is exactly what Peter Jones was doing, and he has 56 seconds. So you charge with only four seconds in. What I do at midnight, Peter, starting now, because many people who listen may be overstimulated, excited, they may take exception to it, or worse still, Kenneth Williams. Deviation is discussing other people's reactions to something. The, the subject is what I do at midnight. Well, it's other people's now reaction to what I do that's the important thing. Peter justified what he was saying, so he has another point, and there are 49 <laughs> seconds on what I do at midnight, starting now. Well, just after. Uh, Clendy Millie. <laughs> yes, I agree, Andre. 47 seconds on what I do at midnight, starting now. 
What I do at midnight does vary, because sometimes I may be in a very deep sleep, and here... Uh, Kenneth wins a challenge. Deviation. She can't do anything if she's in a deep sleep, so why talk about it? <laughs> she can dream, can't she? What I do at midnight is, yes. listen, I'm in a deep sleep. I can't do anything yeah. in a deep sleep. Well, you could be dreaming, you could be twitching. That isn't doing in the sleep. Yes, it is. You could be doing. turning over and putting the bed. Oh, off silly, off. you're talking a load of rabbit. When you're doing your acting, you're going about, you should see me when I'm really going at something. I'm not laying there deep breathing. I have heard people say, what did you do at midnight last night when I was yeah, fast when asleep? Ask you, it's another matter entirely. Let me ask you. are the sleep. And the person says, I don't know. Judgments. In any case, there's nothing in the rules that says we can't oh, talk a load of rubbish. Oh, he's or again. <laughs> What's that? Well, repeat it, repeat it. Because I said, it was a, it there's was nothing good. in the rules that says we can't talk a load of rubbish. <laughs> I don't know whether Otherwise, the applause was for Peter Jones's remark or for who they thought it was intended for. So, <laughs> having said that, Andre Melly, you, you can have share a share it among yourselves. <laughs> Well, said Peter. Forty seconds with you, Andre, now, on what I do at midnight, starting now. I turn to the left and then the right, wiggle my toes, stretch and curl up tighter, and hear Mommy coming from the other room. So I get up very slowly and drowsily drunk with sleep, go to see what my young daughter wants, find that it's a glass of water or too hot, cold, wants to go wee-wee, oh. Kevin <laughs> <laughs> Freud has challenged. It was the second we. Yes. <laughs> Charmingly put, Clement. You almost deserve a bonus point for your. <laughs> and, uh, we say, you know, and. So, you have 19 seconds on what I do at midnight, Clement, starting now. What I do at midnight is to try to turn into a pumpkin because my children said it was very important that I should do so. I get a piece of green plastic and drape myself in it entirely, painting from inside signs and memorable... Uh, Andre Melly's child. Uh, the hesitation before the memorable. Yes, I think he, he was got as close to hesitation as it's possible mm. to get with... Do you think Ian could not put the whistle in his mouth until he intends to blow it? Mm. Um, <laughs> one is lulled into a sense of feeling that there can only be two or three seconds, and he seems to put his whistle in his mouth earlier and earlier. Like I know. <laughs> Andre Melly, you have a correct challenge. Four seconds of what I do at midnight, starting now. Occasionally, I go in the kitchen and have a glass of milk and two biscuits. <laughs> um, uh, Andre Melly was then speaking when the whistle went, but um, Andre, I'm afraid you're still in fourth place, but you've moved up on Kenneth Williams, who's moving up on Peter Jones, who's moving up on a leader, who is still Clement Freud. A lot of a movie going on in this program, isn't it? Andre Melly, will you begin the next round? Limericks, 60 seconds, starting now. There once was a dean of St. Paul's who looked at the cracks in the walls. Uh, Kenneth Murder's challenged. I was trying to save us from... <laughs> you didn't succeed. I didn't have to. No, you I... didn't have to. All that happens is Andre Melly gets a point because she wasn't deviating from limericks, and there are 53 seconds starting now. If we stick them with glue, do you think that will do? And the answer he got was, certainly not. It'll be absolutely inadequate. <laughs> this is the only limerick that I know, and in spite of Clement Freud, it is reasonably clean. Some of them are filthy, and that's uh, why... Clement Freud is challenged. Uh, Clement, you've challenged. Why? Um, <laughs> if it's the only limerick she knows, how does she know that the others are clean? Uh, uh, I, uh, because it's probably she means it's the only one she knows, having committed it to memory. Oh, no, knows, she might know. Knows means having knowledge. No, no, no. Often. Knows can also mean that she can have knowledge that other limericks exist, but she does not know any by heart to recite. That's the way I interpret it. So okay. Andre keeps the subject, and there are 37 seconds on limericks well, starting now. I'd, I'm very pleased to get the point, but I'd love Clement to have it so as I could learn some dirty ones, as I believe there are a great many of them. The uh, Kenneth are... Williams has challenged. Yes, she said dirty before, and she said it again. Dirty. Yes, Definitely. all right, uh, Kenneth, you have the subject now, and there are 28 seconds on limericks starting now. Well, there was a young lady who arrived who ate a green apple and died, <laughs> and the apple were fermented inside the demented made cider inside her inside. <laughs> <laughs> Clement 
Troy, it's your challenge came first. What's the challenge? Inside the insider. Insider, the insider. Yeah. Where's the repetition? Inside her inside. Inside her inside is in, I N, side, S I D E, her inside, I N, S I D E, or one word. So, there are 17 seconds, Clement, starting now. There was a young man from Japan whose poetry never would scan. When asked reasons why, he replied with a sigh, well, you see, I always try to get as many words into the last line as I possibly can. <laughs> now, this is a memory which... Well, Clement Roy was then speaking when the whistle went, so he gained that extra point, and having got a delightful laugh on his particular limerick, even if you thought that Kenneth deserved the point before the end, it wouldn't have made any difference to the final result, and we did have a limerick from Clement as well. Uh, Peter, you're the only one who hasn't given us a limerick. Do you know one? No, I don't know any. No, Good. I can't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have no more time to play just a minute this week, unfortunately, so let me give you the final score. Andre Melly was just in fourth place, one point behind Kenneth Williams, who was two points behind Peter Jones, who was quite a few points behind our winner, who is once again, Clement Freud. <laughs> we do hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute, and we'll want to tune in again next time. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye. <laughs> the chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The program was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hatch. Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Sheila Hancock in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Hello and welcome once again to Just a Minute. And once again, I'm going to ask our four clever panellists to speak, if they can, for just one minute on some unlikely subject without hesitation without repetition and without deviating from the subject on the card which is written in front of me. And of course, according to how well they do this, they will gain points or their mm. opponents will. And we're going to begin the show this week with Derek Nimmo. Derek, can you talk on empathy? For, yes, you may well look surprised. For 60 seconds, starting now. When I first joined this game these many years ago, there was nobody on the panel that I felt any empathy for at all because the only member permanently there was Clement Freud. <laughs> but one day, the walk across the studio floor, light footsteps, a clean-cut youth with a strong jaw and a fine nose, proud, up there, and of course it was Kenneth Williams. <laughs> and it's been my privilege over these many weeks and days that have gone by since that time insert myself. Uh, Clement Freud has challenged by his teacher. Yes, alas, there was. I mm. thought he was being so complimentary. Well, I thought it was one... lovely. I'm yes. wicked. <laughs> you wouldn't dare have challenged him, would you? Ooh, it's a very no. clever ploy, that, yes. His flow was beautiful. I mean, it was throbbing <laughs> there. It was beautiful. I loved every minute of it. I really did. Oh, I'm glad about that. Mm. Yeah. Clement Freud didn't like it, so he challenged him on a correct challenge of hesitation. Oh, I, like it. I like it. He liked it, though. He's admitted it. He's yeah. coming out with it now. Yeah. Well, all right. He can come out with even more in a second, because as that was a correct challenge, you gain a point, Clement Freud, and you take over the subject of empathy. There are 25 seconds left, and you start now. It's very strange how many people don't know the difference between sympathy and empathy, because empathy is having a fellow feeling with another person, whereas the first sentiment of which I spoke has no sort of connection other than... Uh, Derek Nimmo has challenged. <laughs> Hesitation. Hesitation, oh. yes. I think you're confused. The gesture I... was... Oh, actually, I thought the, what you were describing... Now, I know what he was up against. I know what he was up against. It's a peculiarly difficult thing to do, isn't it? That definition thing in yes. the sense of not repeating. Exactly. It's a very difficult thing to do. And yes. I thought he had a damn good try. I mean, he was... <laughs> You're, you're giving him sympathy rather than empathy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, lovely, Kenneth. Uh, Derek Nemo, I agree with your challenge. You have a point, and you have now eight seconds left for empathy starting now. 
to find out how K.W. really thinks and behaves and believes and smells. Yeah. <laughs> Big challenge, one half second before the whistle. What was it? Uh, she you made me jump with the whistle. I went, oh, oh, right, oh well, all right, then we won't count that. We'll say the Derek after the whistle. Was <laughs> speaking when the whistle well, went. With and, the whistle. Uh, we, if anybody doesn't know by now, I just remind you, when the whistle goes, it tells us that 60 seconds is up, and whoever is speaking at that particular moment gains the extra point. On this occasion, it was Derek Nemo. So he has two at the end of that round. Clement Freud has one, and it's given a round. We're now into the second round. Um, Clement, it's your turn to begin, so would you start now with the subject of table turning? 60 seconds, starting now. Table turning is the most extraordinary thing. It's something I've never done myself. But you take the object which has four legs, grip it at both ends. Uh, Derek Nimmer has challenged. The table doesn't necessarily have four legs, DVH. Ah. No, but a table can have four legs. He said which has four legs. Oh, I think a you're table, not the a table. table. You'll be I awfully think. pedantic. I mean, a table I'm can sorry. have four legs. It can have, probably can have one leg. Yes, you can have a sense of pedestal. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, carry on on table turning, Clement Freud, with 47 mm. seconds left, starting now. And whip it quickly over your shoulder <laughs> to end up on the floor. Uh, Derek Nimmer, Yes, and that's table throwing, not table <laughs> 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 so how you turn the table. Sounds very sadistic, all this whipping of tables. <laughs> All right. I think that, here yeah, we're, we're a bit tough last time. We'll, we'll give it to Derek on that one because uh, uh, you could interpret his table whipping. And, uh, Derek, you have, uh, you have 43 seconds on table turning starting now. It helps awfully if the table is round, of course, rather than square, because then it moves much more freely. But best of all, you should have 47 people, fairly strong, masculine if possible, and so they can all roll the tables in an ever-decreasing circle so they bump into one another in the middle. This has a particular name that's called Tevlatis Patona in Greece, <laughs> but sometimes it's known in Italy by something quite different. And if you're very lucky, I would think... <laughs> Uh, you blew the whistle yourself. I never got no. I whistle. must inform the listener that he produced his it. own whistle because he's asked about a drive from Louis. <laughs> so me. everybody else has a point for that. Oh, we love it. Derek continues with the subject with 11 seconds left on table turning starting now. One of the nice things in this game is to be able to tame the tail. Shannon Hancock has challenged. Hesitation. Yes, we'll give it to you and table turning is now with you, Sheila, with seven seconds to go starting now. A good example of the idiomatic use of this phrase would be if Clement Freud were talking and only had two seconds to go, <laughs> and I blew the whistle. those two seconds before the whistle was blown he didn't so Sheila was speaking then gained the extra point Kenneth Williams your turn to begin the subject my following <laughs> I think a lot of them follow you into the audience of just a minute we're all pleased to say but would you talk about my following for 60 seconds starting now well this is a very personal subject because obviously it means those who are around me very often and comprise so to speak an entourage <laughs> like ancient people kings philosophers and brilliant <laughs> uh, uh, Sheila Hong Hancock Chung <laughs> Sheila Hong <laughs> I don't believe that he's surrounded by kings and ancient people and all that. He just said... No, like, I don't believe it is, me. but he was saying that this probably refers to my following like an entourage, as in, and, and comparing it to olden times. I disagree with Sheila's challenge, who have 43 seconds left on my following Kenneth, starting now. And they include very brilliant mentors indeed, among them Madam Osiris, who always says, come on, Kenny, look into my crystal ball, your lucky sandwich filling is that and shrimp! <laughs> yes, and your lucky stone is gone! Uh, and Uranus is last, what? Shaman Freud is challenged. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm afraid yes. Madame Osari said lucky mm. twice. Mm. He's got no idea. I was in the middle of a story. He's got no idea, has he? Will you finish like? your story? Go no, on. I'm not bothered now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Clement Freud, you have the subject 22 seconds on my following starting now. My following has been said to be the best in London. I pick up a trail at Piccadilly Circus and manage to follow it all the way down Regent Street along New Orleans Street. Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. Deviation is now talking about a trail uh, such as hounds follow in a hunt. <laughs> the, the, have you ever seen him with his on the dogs? Card is my following, not following a track. Well, you see, you can also be my following in the sense of a sentence, my following a dog. Do you understand? What are you talking about? Nobody would say, my following a dog. <laughs> people in London going about talking illiterately in the fashion now follow me at all. Who cares? Well, I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> I think we, it was a justifiable challenge, <laughs> Kenneth. It's just that we confuse Clement Freud with dogs so often we get very confused. Um, <laughs> ten seconds for you now on my following, Kenneth, starting now. Oh, and me? Yes. I'm sorry for it within. That's yes. unfair. I didn't realise. I'm sorry. No, wait a minute. No, no. Shut up. That's unfair. Sheila Hank, no. I challenge you. Hesitation. No, I wasn't realising. You weren't it's concentrating, in other words. So Sheila has a point. She oh, it's seven a seconds I... on my following, starting now. I the following of a little girl of eight years old who is about the only person who would bother with me and happens to be uh, my... Derek Nimmo has challenged. Maybe I'd bother with her. So <laughs> would I! Oh, I've been following you ever since I came into your dressing room that night. <laughs> a lovely face. I had a lovely smile. I said, hello, darling. He said, oh, go on, get out. Get out. <laughs> you weren't deviating from the subject on the card. No. Much as we all would love to be in your family. I'd, I'd almost like to give it to them. They well, you only have two seconds left. Oh, you, right. If you're careful, you can get two points, yeah? Yes. You have my following, two seconds starting now. Also, my auntie Ruby is quite... <laughs> <laughs> at the end of that round with Sheila Hancock speaking when the whistle went gained the extra point and has leapt into the lead and Derek Nimmo your <laughs> turn to begin my earliest memory <gasps> can you talk about my earliest memory for 60 seconds starting now there are several things that might claim to be my earliest memory but I think possibly my earliest memory of all was of nurse um, Sheila Hancock has challenged deviation I don't think several things can you only have one earliest memory well, yes, the subject is old card, card Kenneth. Singular on the card. Do you yes. want to come and sit up here? No, no. I'll just give you a hand. I'll help you out. You know. He says there are several things that could be my, my earliest claim. memory. I would have thought there was only one. If it really? is a singular, my earliest memory, he can't say there are several things which are my yeah, earliest memory. I said there are several things that well, several things might claim to be, but my earliest memory was. I mean, one can't always be too sure what the no, you're first being, thing you remember. Yes. When and you're... she did come in very rapidly. All, All right. right. She doesn't so. play the game I'm as often. I'm quite curious to know what your earliest memory is, so you can keep it. So, uh, Derek, you have 53 <laughs> seconds on my earliest memory, starting now. Was, I think, dear Nurse Snowball, smelling <laughs> of small Kenneth, beer. Kenneth, just challenge you. Yes, he laughed and, I'm afraid, hesitated. Well, yes, all right, Kenneth. So you have 47 <laughs> seconds on my earliest <laughs> memory, starting now. It was unquestionably <laughs> when the drama teacher said, get up and give them all you've got. Lay, Griselda, and sing the song that lovers sing. And so I... Uh, Clement Freud has challenged you. Two things. Sing the song that lovers sing. Yes, what a pity. Um, because I would love to know what else Griselda said. Um, <laughs> there, are no, there are 30. There are 32 seconds on my earliest memory now, Clement, with you starting now. My earliest memory was having my nappy changed by a nurse <laughs> when I was very young indeed. Uh, Sheila Hancock has challenged. Did he say when I was when I was? I thought he repeated it. My earliest memory was having my nappy changed when I... No, there, weren't two, there wasn't two when I, I was. It's just, it the two was is, but your challenge was when I was. 25 seconds on my earliest memory, Clement, starting now. Taking the piece of silken cloth by one corner. Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. Deviation, nappies aren't silk. <laughs> they were my day. You see, this is my problem, ladies and gentlemen and listeners. It isn't your problem, you know that. Nappies don't you? You're a father yourself. I know. I... <laughs> Yes, I know that nappies and all the ones I used were, and all the ones I had on them, were, but it is quite possible that a nappy could have been silken. So there's no reason he's not actually deviating from the subject of the cut. Now, I can, in a situation like this, only put it to the wider discretion. If you think he was challenged too soon, if you think he was going on to say a silken nappy, then you're with Kenneth Williams and you cheer. And if you disagree and you're with Clement Freud on this and you give him justification, then you boo. And will you all do it together now? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> you are enjoying yourselves, aren't you? Well, all I can say is the, the audience has decided that Cla uh, Kenneth Williams should have the benefit of the doubt, and he has the subject, therefore, with 20, uh, two seconds on my earliest memory starting now. And singing thus of the rose and the ring, I grew to a stature unbelievable, principally because I was on stilts. Unbelievable, so it may. Uh, Clement's word is challenged. Second, unbelievably. Uh, yeah. I said unbelievably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, from another point, in seven seconds on my earliest memory, starting now. Then with my feather duster, I flicked the prince in the face. Oh, they shouted, what bravado! <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> And they've been shouting, oh, what bravado, ever since, haven't they? Kenneth, you've gained a number of points at the end of that round, and you really have leapt into the lead. Oh! <laughs> But you have to work at it hard because Clement is almost beside you and Sheila and Derek just a little way away. <coughs> Sheila, your turn to begin. Getting comfortable. Can you talk on that subject for 60 seconds starting now? This is something I find incredibly difficult as I am rather a fidgety person. However, since I've taken up yoga, it becomes slightly simpler. What you have to do is lie on your back on a fairly hard surface and then you relax your toes and then your heels after that your calf muscles followed by your knees and your thighs <laughs> then your <laughs> She was trying to find a way to stop saying your, which you repeated about five times. Yeah, I don't, you don't go on your. No, I know we don't go on your, but after about seven times, I would have given it against her because she could have gone on definitely every other word your. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she hesitated searching, and you now, Derek, have a point and the subject and 30 seconds on getting comfortable starting now. To get truly comfortable, I would also require Sheila Hancock, <laughs> and I would want her to twiddle my toes, first of all, and soothe my. Uh, Sheila Hancock Deviation, I won't. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of twiddling his toes. He twiddles his toes very well on his own. We've all yeah. seen it, haven't we? Yes, yeah, but it's not again. deviating from getting comfortable. You see, this is Derek's idea of getting comfortable, you twiddling his toes. Yes, the but if I'm not willing to cooperate, it's not possible. Ah, but it could still be his fantasy oh, that right. he, if he wanted you to do it, this well, would it make him comfortable. Well, it should be fantasies of getting comfortable on <laughs> This is Derek's idea of getting oh, comfortable. Right. He has a point and he has 23 seconds starting now. There are other ways of getting comfortable, of course. You can go into a lovely green... Uh, Kevin Freud has shut. Repetition of of course. No, not that time. No, he hasn't said of course yet in this round. All the time. Oh, not, not this round. Not no. this round. No. <laughs> he does, he no, does you, keep saying You're keeping up your campaign. Yes, my campaign stop people saying <laughs> uh, Derek Nimmo, I disagree with that challenge. You have another point. And you have 18 seconds on getting comfortable starting now. A little white tent in a meadow, a boy scout and I. <laughs> and <laughs> 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 the green grass and the meadow flowers. He uh, giggled. He giggled? Yes. I can giggle if I want to. Nothing against giggling. <laughs> yeah, but is there a giggle hesitation? I didn't hesitate. Okay. I no, I don't think you really hesitated there. Anyway, if I, I, the trouble is I didn't hear it because you giggled. It's me, so, I think. Uh, <laughs> Thirteen seconds on getting comfortable, Derek, starting now. On a boat on the sea with a green wave blowing hard over the prow. That is a very good way of getting comfortable because it's soothing. Strange how the motion of the sea sometimes can caress your whole... <laughs> He did repeat C then. Somebody could have got him with two seconds to go, but they didn't, so Derek Nimmo has now taken the lead at the end of that round. <laughs> Clement Freud, will you begin the next round, please? Bumbling. Can you talk to us on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Bumbling is a method of speech or the mode of address, a form of saying something in which you can say unbelievably with one breath, unbelievably <laughs> with another, unbelievably, 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 <laughs> and you go on bumbling happily because it has just been proved that this is within the rules of this game. Something like that. <laughs> Fumbling is something... Uh, Sheila Hancock has challenged. Was it hesitation? I think it was, yes. Very long pause. Uh, 30 seconds now on bumbling, Sheila, starting with you. I think <coughs> it was mentioned originally in Man in a Boat. Three 
uh, the same that I just said. They did. There was a character called. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bubbling. Because it was completely incoherent. And it was bumbling. I know. She. It was bumbling. So she has another point. And there are 22 seconds <laughs> on bumbling, Sheila, starting now. It probably is one of the reasons why. Um, this... Kenneth Williams' challenge. He has taste. Sheila, there was only two seconds. So it couldn't have been hesitation. You have now 20 seconds left on bumbling, starting now. And after that, you can just waffle around. And this program is a prize example of how you have to bumble. In fact, I don't think it's very good for the English language to appear on this show because it encourages you. Uh, not Clement Freud is challenged. Right? Repetition of show. No, mm. I said program before. Yeah. I did honestly because I thought of it. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there are six seconds on bumbling now, still with you, Sheila, starting now. I think it is much better. Um, Derek Nimmer's oh, challenge, I, I think. Yes, I yes, think. Yes, I'm afraid you yes, did think too right. much there. When you stop and have to start again, it's difficult. There are four and a half seconds on bumbling with you, Derek. One always ought to go to the root of words and decide what they really do mean. First of all, we must dissect the word into <laughs> bum. Derek Nimmo, having dissected the word, was saved by the bell. <laughs> by the whistle on this occasion, but he's still in the lead, two points ahead of Sheila, four points ahead of Clement Freud and Kenneth Williams, who are both equal in third place. Kenneth Williams, your turn to begin. The subject, Milo of Crotona. <laughs> Will you talk about him for 60 seconds, starting now. I don't know why they always choose these odd people for me to discuss. <laughs> he was a Greek athlete and won 12 times this incredible marathon at the Games, which were, of course, the Olympic ones, and he appeared at Pythia. Now, the Pythian Games were held... Um, Clement for his challenge, John. The repetition of Games. Yes, and Pythia too. Um, no, Pythia and Pythia. Pythia. Oh, yes, that's right. Olympic Games and the Pythia Games. <coughs> um, Clement, a correct challenge. You have a subject and the p a point and the subject. And you have 43 seconds on Milo of Crotona starting now. Milo of Crotona acted in the 500 BC era and was, as my colleague Kenneth Williams said, an athlete of great renown. It is now a better known bedtime drink. And many is the woman who has said to her son, do sip up your Milo of Fraterna before the wicked fairies get you. A very nice, pleasant sentiment, I always feel. Although feeling is something I don't do as often, perhaps, as my colleague and my friend. Uh, <laughs> Repetition of colleague in a lot of hesitation. Yes, he was sort of slowly running down. <laughs> Talk about sheer fantasy. But of course, if you can go with a stern a face as Clement Freud, with the authority and erudition that backs so much of what he says, sometimes you're reluctant to challenge. Uh, Derek, I agree with the challenge. You have three seconds to go on Milo of Protona starting now. He met the most horrible death because he banged his hand into a tree and wool get him. <laughs> oh, we're giving a bedtime drink or meal of Crotona. Come up when put us to sleep here with a meal of Crotona. <laughs> you are still in the lead, Derek Nimmo, at the end of that round. And would you please begin the next round? The subject is my rummage. Can you talk to me on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? I have a lovely little attic and it's filled with rummage of one kind and another. An old clothes horse, a violin, piles of books, flutes, cellos, a string guitar, and my favorite teddy whose name is Bobby and has eyes that are made of wool because I once chewed. Um, Clement Freud is chant, why? Deviation. Why? You don't keep your favorite teddy in your attic. <laughs> if you had any affection for it at all, it would be... Well, it could still spirit, be like his favorite teddy from when he was a little boy, he but now... He didn't say that. He said my favorite teddy. He, well, it's almost still his favorite teddy, but his favorite teddy happens to be in his attic. It's uh, very unfortunate, and... Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I disagree with the challenge. Derek, 38 seconds left on my rummage, starting now. Sometimes my vicar comes round, the Reverend Selwyn Cox. Um, Ken Williams... He's 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 not his vicar, he's the vicar of the parish. You can't have a personal vicar, and he's... Uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
you? You can't have a personal vicar, but you can often say my vicar. But I do think, and if you're as clerical as Derek Nimmer in the parts he plays, you might often actually say my vicar. But I do think what we'll do here is Derek's well in the lead. We'll give you, <laughs> for a good challenge, a point and the subject. And there are 34 seconds left on my rummage starting now. Includes a miniature chamber pot with, after you, my dear, in gold. <laughs> Everyone comments upon this. Oh, how charming they cry on entering the room, for it is a focal point. Next to that stands a China whale, presented to me by that great person, Mr. Orson Wells, who was brilliant enough to pick me out from among hundreds of others as the most talented young man of his day, which of course is absolutely true. I would say... <laughs> <that> in... <laughs> Well, Kenny Gillis began speaking when the whistle went, and he did at the end of that round, gaining the extra point, managed to leap forward from fourth place into third place. Uh -huh. But I'm afraid we have no more time to play just a minute. Clement Freud, for once, finished in fourth place, to one point behind Kenneth Williams, who was equal in second place. My apologies to that brilliant young man over there. Equal in second place alongside Sheila Hancock, but none of them managed to overtake Derek Nimmo, who is once again this week's winner. Just a minute from all of us here. Goodbye. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The program is devised by Ian Messeter and produced by David Hatch. Kenneth Williams, Clement Freud, Peter Jones and Amy MacDonald in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Hello and welcome to Just a Minute. And once again, it's uh, my great pleasure to welcome back Amy MacDonald to play against our three regular male uh, players of uh, panellists of Just a Minute. And once again, I'm going to ask them all to talk, if they can, on some unlikely subject without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating from the subject which is written on the card in front of me. Let us begin the show this week with Kenneth Williams. Kenneth, a delightful subject for you to start the show. Getting launched on the waters of oratory. <laughs> Something you've done impeccably and magnificently in just a minute. Will you talk on the subject now for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, I would say the secret of this lies, of course, in the business of becoming totally uninhibited. And as tension can well, and from which you can live well. Uh, Amy MacDonald is challenged. Uh, Why? Well, I can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> so, what is your challenge? Hesitation? Well, what's that? Deviation? Well, it, no, it's hesitation. Well, it, it, it could be deviation because he could be talking about anything as far as I can see. Well, of course, yes. It is difficult. Actually, Kenneth, look, we had this another uh, recently, and I know you felt a little bit uh, cheated by it. The thing is, we couldn't quite hear you. I think the best thing... Oh, to well, do I think you'd better ask the producer. I mean, could you hear me all right, dear? Oh. Yes, he says yes. That's enough for me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the producer can hear. That's all right. I, look... Well, I'm interested whether she can hear. It's not for her. It's for the audience at the other end of the box. That's what they've got if to decide If she can't about. hear you over there, it is deviation... We're not she... concerned whether she can hear or not. Oh, half the time she wants to wash her ears out. Look at her sitting there smoking fags like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> but it's great. No right to be sitting there discussing my ability. All right, then, when I have a difficult decision yes, to make or I'll impossible on, decision to make, mm -hmm. I have to call on the wisdom oh, and the discretion dear, of the audience. Oh. Because if you can't hear or is so quiet you see, could be hesitation, then you have a legitimate challenge. If you think that Amy's challenge was legitimate, will you cheer? And if you disagree, will you boo? And will you all do it together now? <laughs> 
they feel, Kenneth, they would like you to continue on the waters of oratory. <laughs> so it's an incorrect challenge. You have a point for that. You have 47 seconds getting launched on the waters of oratory starting now. And so, finding the right wavelength, one says <laughs> immediately <laughs> that Cuffew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly on the lead. The ploughman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. I'll face the uh, Peter Jones has challenged you. Why? That's not oratory, that's poetry. <laughs> questioned it and said, that's nothing to do with speaking extemporaneously. You said, nevertheless, he's sticking to the subject, it is the all right, and allowed him to, to go on and on about saying. Caesar striding like some colossus. Right, Kenneth, have you finished? Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, that was a quite a different subject and a different time. The thing is, this was poetry and you were not, therefore, getting launched on the waters of oratory. I think that he I'm He was sinking in a morass of it. <laughs> I think I'm justified in giving a point to Peter for a correct challenge and 20 seconds left on the subject starting now. I think of the great speakers in the House of Commons, in the Senate, in America, and even in Hyde Park. I can recall listening to speakers there. Uh, Clement Freud has challenged. I don't seem to have said anything. <laughs> He did say a... speakers twice. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm glad yes. you said that because yes. I, I was going to say that. Yes, yes. I can't yes. give you a point for the fact that, that you haven't spoken. I just we thought I'd been... say hello. <laughs> Well, all right. The audience I know and dear to you already because, uh, anyway, the correct challenge for repetition of speaker. And so you take the subject having gained a point and there are seven seconds left getting launched on the waters of oratory starting now. A godchild of my wife's was christened in Brompton Oratory, and we were privileged to see her literally launched. That was a very nice way of taking that particular subject, and Clement Freud was then speaking when the whistle went, and as you know, the whistle tells us that 60 seconds is up, and whoever is speaking at that particular moment gains an extra point. Clement Freud, you got it at the end of that round. You have two now, and Kenneth Williams and Peter Jones have one. Amy has yet to score. Isn't it an exciting game? <laughs> uh, Peter Jones, will you begin the next round for us, please? The subject, Knights of Old. Will you talk on that for just one minute, starting now? They certainly were very brave, if small and slightly built men, who were always... Uh, Kenneth Williams' challenge. Hesitation. Yes, I think it was just slow enough to be hesitation, so I'm giving the benefit of the doubt, because it's often difficult to judge, to Kenneth Williams, a correct challenge, 50 seconds on Knights of Old Kenneth, starting I now. I would agree that most of our knowledge about it is derived largely from memory. Uh, Amy MacDonald has challenged. I'm sorry, but he's doing Well, this today. time I'm going to give it to you, Amy, and say you have 46 <laughs> seconds on Knights of Old, starting now. <laughs> days it must have been wonderful to be a damsel and being surrounded by all these knights because the lovely thing was you felt so safe you see you could walk down the street in your long flowing robes and somebody could come along and attack you and it wouldn't worry you one little bit because you knew <laughs> just... Kenneth Williams has challenged why if yes, no money was attacked would be worried <laughs> I think, Amy, if you were attacked, you'd be worried. You might no, not... I'm saying you wouldn't worry about being attacked. No, I think Because that... you, didn't fin you didn't let me finish what I was trying to say, then you'd have understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> yes, I know, but, but if we let you finish, then you can't be had for deviation, repetition, or hesitation. No, I, I think he got in quite accurately there, because he, anyone, anyone... He's anybody... not in a very good mood today, is he? No, but he, once he gets the subject back, he'll be in a very, very good mood. Uh, Knights of Old is with you, Kenneth. 26 seconds left, starting now. And, of course, as Mallory rightly tells us, Arthur said to Guinevere, when we two meet again before... Um, Ke Amy McDonald's challenge. Deviation. Why? How does he know what Arthur said to Guinevere, whatever name <laughs> <laughs> Well, he could have read it in a book, you know. 
Well, this has been that. chronicled, you know, dearie. <laughs> You have nights of old, and there are 15, 16 seconds to go, starting now. Thou shalt spring to me and claim me thine. Uh, Clement Freud is challenged. Deviation. Why? Arthur was a king, Guinevere a queen. The subject is nights of old. But it doesn't matter if you talk about ah. nights of old. The nights of old were associated with queens. So you have the subject. You have 11 seconds left on nights of old, Kenneth, starting now. And she said, thou shalt go forth on that great barge unto the west and like a swarm, swan, swoothing swan. I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> Clement Floyd managed to get in. Yeah, you know. should have kept going because there's only half a second left. <laughs> Clement, you judge. Is. Yes, you could have kept going and they wouldn't have got you, Kenneth. No, I have to hand it to Clement because he's um he's got a hawk like ear, you know what I mean? Yes. He's very, very sharp. And he's very sharp you to indeed. pick up you when you speak quietly as well. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> what Clement, you have one second left on Knights of Old starting now. Uh, Clement Troy may have got the, uh, the point for speaking when the whistle went, but Kenneth Williams, with Knights of Old, managed to get quite a number of points and has gone into the lead at the end of that round. <laughs> Amy MacDonald, we'd like you to begin the next round. The subject is me. So can you talk about me? We love it when you talk about me. So will you talk about me now for 60 seconds, starting now? I am a girl born in February in early 1940. Uh, Kenneth Williams is challenged. Well, I think there's hesitation. It was a, it was a repetition of b -b -b -b, but it was not uh, hesitation. So Amy has a point for a wrong I've never heard such rubbish. What sort of chairman are you? I mean, uh, you I have mean, um, 49 seconds left on me, I mean, Amy, starting chair, now. I mean, it's not even playing this the game. This makes me astrologically. Um, oh, was oh, no, I was we know what kind of chairman he is. Yes, that's right. Yes. A so very you, you heterosexual were, you were chairman. Yes, yes you, were being, you, were, you, were, you were being... I was I know, you were being barracked. You were being barracked uh, by the opposition. And it's not permitted, especially to the ladies in the game. They can barrack the men, but not right. the ladies. So you have 46 seconds on me starting now. This makes me a Pisces, or as some people would say, Biscuits which, astrologically, is too little fish. Uh, I've said that challenge. twice, I know. What? Well, she did, did. say astrologically yes. twice. Clement, you have a correct challenge, and you have 37 seconds on me starting now. Me is the second syllable of Amy McDonald's Christian name, and a very beautiful... Uh, Peter Jones' has challenge. Uh, hesitation. Yes, Peter, uh, Clement Troy looked at Amy Donald and just All paused. I want to say... <laughs> Wasn't hesitation. Right? Yes. Well, Peter, you got in there first, and there are 31 seconds on me starting now. It's the note that follows do re and precedes so far ti do. Uh, now, uh, Amy McDonald has challenged. It's what? wrong. It's do re mi fa so la ti. He said so yeah, far. Yeah, but you see, the trouble is, Amy, that that it is quite correct to say that it does precede those other notes that he mentioned. No, it does he not may precede not precede fa. It precedes. Not directly, but it does. It is there. That's ahead of it, isn't it? In other you words, he precedes. didn't say them in the right sequence, but it doesn't matter. He did say it precedes them, so he has a point for an incorrect challenge, and he has 23 seconds on me starting now. And I was born a few years before Amy MacDonald, <laughs> and I'm dark and... <laughs> oh, Amy! <laughs> Challenge on uh, Kenneth, challenge, well, I mean, he's not dark at all. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's terribly unfair. Peter's going slightly grey at the temples. Neither here nor there. Whether he's going grey, Cindy is not dark. Is well, he? I know. I am prematurely grey. That's not <laughs> question. <laughs> Fifteen seconds for you, Kenneth, on me starting now. Me became famous at the county hall when, singing leader, I sprang forward to the footlights and rendered this incredible version of Ich weiß nicht, was soll es bedeuten. <laughs> It means I must be in the lead, right? <laughs> Kenneth, you have been in the lead for two rounds Good now. for me! <laughs> have you I got into the lead me. for once? You held the lead. And you're still there. Clement Freud, your turn to begin. How to improve the memory. 
Can you talk to us about that for 60 seconds starting now? I was once told a method of improving the memory, but I regret to say that I have forgotten it. <laughs> I found the easiest way of doing it is to look at notices and the scriptures and remember everything that you read or see or hear and try to get total recall so that the memory is improved. But there are other ways. There's a class in the centre of London where a man who looks particularly unpleasant on the advertisements promises to teach you how you never, ever forget anybody's name, telephone number, mother-in-law, favourite colour or jewel, let alone their astrological and astronomic signs. He is called Walter C. Hirschfield, a name which I nearly forgot before... <laughs> Peter Jones has challenged what? Repetition of name. Yes, whose name I forget and whose name I nearly forgot. You mentioned his name before. So Peter has a correct challenge with six and a half seconds on how to improve the memory starting now. The thing to do is to associate the word with another one. So if one is trying to call... On the whistle went, so he has gained the extra point. He's now equal in second place to Clement Freud behind Kenneth Williams, and Amy McDonald is just one, two points, sorry, two points behind them. Kenneth, your turn to begin. The subject, Hero's Fountain. Can you talk to us about that subject that Ian has obviously specially thought of for you, starting now? Well, I would say this all stems from ancient Greece, and I think... I think I'm right when I maintain that we are referring to a great mathematician and, of course, the business of displacing the boiling... Uh, Amy MacDonald has challenged you. A deviation. Why? Hero wasn't a mathematician. Well, I'm afraid Hero was a mathematician. There's, it's, there's not everything known about Hero, but there's certain things that are known. One was that he was a mathematician. Bad luck, Amy. Did yes. I thought she was this Greek goddess. I thought he invented the sandwich. <laughs> uh, but um, actually, Kenneth, you weren't deviating, so you have 41 seconds on Hero's Fountain starting now. I'm inverting a substance which was very comparable to glass. It was transparent enough to give the same illusion or effect, depending, of course, on your <laughs> Peter Jones has challenged what? Well, yeah. Hesitation. Yes, I, I've got to give it to you, because, you know, he'd gone so quiet and low, I thought he'd stopped. <laughs> yeah, so, um, he, he did kind you of You did actually pause. really go very, very quiet and low. We couldn't really hear over here. So Peter has a point and a correct challenge, and 26 seconds on Hero's Fountain Peter starting now. He lived in Alexandria, and he invented a primitive form of steam engine, which was made of a ceramic material, and it boiled when water was put in it and a fire uh, lit Donald underneath. Was, challenged. well steam engines weren't invented in those days now he did establish he invented a very primitive form of one he was rather in advance of his time this character you know oh i see yes i'm oh. sorry amy uh, 12 seconds for peter on hero's fountain starting now a bit like a humming top i suppose and it used to go round it didn't drive anything or create any power, so this could not be harnessed for any practical purpose. <laughs> so, Hero Spartan, with Peter, the extra point going to him for speaking when the whistle went, has taken him into the lead alongside Kenneth Williams at the end of that round. Kenneth, you must look to your laurels. Uh, Peter Jones. <laughs> We're back with you. Your turn to begin. The subject is dates. Can you talk to us about dates for 60 seconds starting now? They are very nourishing. They grow on tall palm trees. In uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged one. They also grow on very short ones. <laughs> That's quite true, Kenneth, and a very nice thought. But you see, he wasn't deviating from dates by saying that they grow on very tall palm trees. Fifty-three seconds on dates, Peter, starting now. And as I was going to say, on very small ones. And in North Africa, in Australia, in California, they are a great delicacy because they can be eaten raw when they are fresh or alternatively they make a very appetizing dessert when the stone is removed and they are stuffed with whipped 
cream, perhaps flavoured with a dash of some tangy liqueur or even a grain or two of nutmeg. This would be an unconventional flavouring, I admit. But on the other hand, it was Winston Churchill's favourite sweet, I'm which was sorry. past... Yes? We loved this. We were all, you know, and our mouths watering. But Amy challenged you. Why? Um, uh, because hesitation. <laughs> that wasn't hesitating. Indigestion, yes. <laughs> hesitation, no. no Twelve no, seconds no, for you with hesitation. dates, Peter, starting now. And this great statesman, when entertaining his cronies at 10 Downing Street, or in the alternative... A uh, Premier Freud has challenged why? We've already had an alternative. <laughs> I thought you said alternatively before, actually, not an no, alternative. No, I did. I didn't say alternative. No, I don't think he said alternative. No, I'll I will put it to the audience. Didn't. I can't remember. Did he say alternative? No, they know. <laughs> Wait a minute. You have to do it together. If he said alternative, churn. If he didn't say boo and all do it together now. <laughs> According to their memory, he did say alternative. <laughs> so, Clement Freud, you have the subject with three seconds on dates starting now. In history classes at school, he was always terribly important. <laughs> so, Clement Freud is in the history He gained the extra point, but he's still in third place behind Kenneth Williams, who was in second place behind um, Peter Jones. And Amy MacDonald, it's your turn to begin. The little things of life. That is what Ian Messett has thought of, and will you talk about that subject for 60 seconds, starting now. When I wake up in the morning and drag myself out of bed, go over to the window and open the curtains, looking out into the garden, I see a cherry tree in full blossom, and I think, ah, oh, isn't that lovely? It's the little things in life that matter. And the sun is shining down on me, and I feel exactly the same way. And then I go and potter around and do my little bits and pieces, and I open the front door, and there on the doorstep is a milk bottle, also conveniently placed just for me to reach down, pick it up, put it in the fridge for a very convenient cup of tea. And I think, now, that really matters to me, the fact that I don't have to Kenneth go Williams, out... Kenneth I'm afraid, challenged you before you got your cup of tea. Oh. Uh, what was the challenge, Kenneth? Repetition, convenient, what? Yes, a convenient one. The idea of her having a cup of tea in the fridge rather fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenneth, you have a point, and you have 20 seconds on the little things of life starting now. Well, this is particularly appropriate apropos myself, because, as you noticed, my stature is not large. But as was once very rightly maintained, it is not the size, it is the quality that counts. <laughs> and even a second <laughs> When he talked about the quality, he got quite emotional and the voice almost disappeared. But, Kenneth, the whistle went to save you, or to help you get an extra point, shall we say, and you have gone back into the lead alongside Peter Jones at the end of that round. <laughs> Clement Freud, your turn to begin. The subject, precision. Can you talk about precision for 60 seconds, starting now? As a quality, precision is exceedingly tedious. You meet someone who says to you, at 4.15 p.m. on Thursday, the 15th of July, 1949, I blew my nose twice, which cannot conceivably be of... Uh, Peter Jones has chuffed. A repetition of blowing his nose twice. <laughs> All right, so it was repetitious of that character to blow his nose twice, but Clement was not deviating from the subject by saying that the man blew his nose twice. No, well, it was just only the same kind of challenge he's often made to me. That's all. It's not true. And I've I, usually, quite accept, I quite accept And that. I've usually given them against him. <laughs> and I'm going to give it against you on this occasion and say that Clement has 44 <laughs> seconds on precision starting now. I know a woman who had three children, each one of which was born at exactly the same moment on second Tuesday in August. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, you well, I think hesitation, don't you? 
<laughs> you think hesitation? Yes. I am ruddy sure there was hesitation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And you were the first one to get in, so you have 20 seconds on precision, Cl uh, Kenneth, starting now. It, of course, means when we say something like baked to a nicety, there you have a statement which could be properly described as one of absolute precision. And in matters of warfare, when people must meet and synchronize their watches. <laughs> So Kenneth Williams will then speak him when the whistle I went. think I'll win. Don't you? I think I'll win this week. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Well, I no. think you've got a very good chance. Yes. In spite of gone all the things that have gone on in this particular yeah. edition of Just a Minute, I think that you have a very good oh, chance. I've never and so I good. happen to know what chances it are because the score is in front of me, and as we have no more time to play Just a Minute, I now will read out the final score. Amy MacDonald, who returned from her glorious of her previous visit, when she swept all before her with these three tough male opponents, didn't do quite so well. I think she was slightly Harris, slightly barracked on occasions, but she finished in a good fourth position behind <laughs> Clement Freud, who was in a modest third position, to Peter Jones' very powerful second position, just behind this week's winner. Quiet! <laughs> I'm sort of building up to it because I know Kenneth would like it that way. <laughs> After many weeks of not making it, at last he has our winner, Kenneth Williams. <laughs> Tell Kenneth a popular victory. It is obvious. We do hope you listeners and audience in the studio have enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute and will want to tune in again next time. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by Simon Brett.